Fibrin Non-Hemolytic Transfusion Reaction or FNHTR. After learning, students should be able to understand the pathophysiology of the reactions, explain causes and effects of the events, select an appropriate laboratory investigations to help the diagnosis and monitoring of medical treatments, and the most important thing is to manage and select the best blood components for patients to prevent the reaction that may occur again. Transfusion reactions can be classified into two main groups, acute and delayed, depending on the onset of the reaction. Both groups are also divided into immune and non-immune mediated based on causes. Immune mediated reaction means that patients produce oral antibodies specific to red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, or plasma while the non-immune mediated reactions are caused by other factors. Fibrin non-hemolytic transfusion reaction is classified as immune mediated acute transfusion reaction. FNHTR is defined as the occurrence of a more than 1 degree Celsius rise in temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or more that associated with transfusion. Other symptoms include chills, wriggles, respiratory distress such as wheezing, cough, dyspnea, and cyanosis, and hypotension. In some cases, patients may be a fibri but have the remaining consideration of symptoms. Symptoms occur during transfusion but may occur up to 4 hours after. FNHTR is self-limited but may cause significant discomfort. Two possible mechanisms are explained for FNHTR. First, classical or immune-mediated FNHTR. Patients' anti-leukocyte antibody, which mainly anti-HLA, may cause fibrin transfusion reaction. The antibody react to donor leukocytes, granulocytes, or platelets and induce the cascade of inflammatory cytokines and other mediators released. Patients at risk for classical or immune-mediated FNHTR are patients with history of multiple transfusions such as thalassemia and multiparous women. Second, non-classical FNHTR pyrogenic cytokines or other inflammatory responsive mediators such as activated complement proteins, nitric oxide, or oxidative lipids that accumulate in donor plasma during storage can cause FNHTR. Patients at risk are patients who receive long storage or leukocyte and reduced cellular blood components. Fever may be from other transfusion reactions including hemolytic transfusion reaction, sepsis, and transfusion related acute lung injury. If there are signs and symptoms related to cardiovascular or respiratory system, it may indicate transfusion related acute lung injury, hypotensive acute hemolytic transfusion reaction bacterial sepsis, anaphylactic, transfusion-associated circulatory overload, or other underlying diseases. If fever and or chills or rigors present, hemorrhoids should be ruled out in patients who experience fever associated with transfusion. Fever may occur as a manifestation of patients' underlying disease and may be difficult to rule out FNHGR if patients has high fever during admission. In addition, bacterial contamination of the component must be considered to be potential cause of fibri reaction. When fibri non hemolytic transfusion reaction is suspected, transfusion should be stopped 
Antipyretics may be administered and provide other medical supports if needed. Transfusion reaction investigation should be performed to rule out hemorrhoids or sepsis. When fever develops during transfusion, the remainder of implicated blood component should not be transfused except in case of rare unit. All laboratory investigation must be completed and discussed with patient's clinical care team before transfusion is resumed. Prevention of febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction. Pre storage leukocyte reduction will decrease the frequency of case. If not available, blood components of 3 day storage or less may be optional to be filtered before issuing. In case of platelet transfusion, plasma reduction is more benefit. Pre medication with antipyretics may help in some patients.